My name is Dr. Perry Solomon, and what I'll be describing today is the modified beer block, a technique I developed from an old anesthetic technique that's been around for over a hundred years. On this patient, this is a 17-year-old girl who I've been treating for several years for excessive sweating of her hand. What I'll be doing now is after I've started an IV intravenous in the back of her hand, I'll be putting a tourniquet around her wrist which will prevent blood from entering her hand after I've squeezed it out using an etch mark or a flat bandage that you'll be seeing in a moment. Using this technique, the 50 or so injections that I'll be giving her in her hand will be painless versus some other techniques such as using ice or creams on the hand that wear off and essentially don't even work. You can see right now her hand is pink just like mine is because the blood supply is full going through her fingers right now. What I'll be doing now is using that flat bandage there called an etch mark to squeeze the blood from her fingers down her hand and past the tourniquet. I will be blowing the tourniquet up so that no new blood will come back down into her hands which will allow me to inject the xylocaine through the intravenous to numb her hand so that the injections that I give her will be painless. Again, as I said, Using a other techniques such as nerve blocks, using needles to numb the areas of the wrist, um, I'm perfectly qualified to do as an anesthesiologist. However, I found that this technique itself is one that is most efficient where the patients drive themselves home and have no complications whatsoever from nerve damage or anything else. As you can see here, I'm turning the tourniquet up, with the pressure going into the tourniquet, preventing any new blood from going down to her hand. I'm taking the tourniquet off at this point and you'll be able to see that her hand is very pale since there's no new blood going into her hand from the tourniquet preventing that from happening. You can see the color difference between her hand and mine right now. I feel the pulse to make sure that there is none so that the, blood, the tourniquet is preventing any blood from going through her hand and I'll also be testing her fingernails to make sure that there's no blood Again, as another test, the capillary refill or little blood vessels in the fingernails don't get full with blood from the hand itself. So what I'll be doing now is injecting xylocaine, a half percent xylocaine, a very safe amount, approximately in this woman's case, 14 to 16 cc's very slowly through the intravenous. It's a 22 gauge needle, a very small intravenous, into her hand and what the Xylocaine will be doing will be filling up the veins there and essentially numbing all the nerves in her hand, preventing her from feeling the injections. Now this is a very, very small amount considering that the normal beer block where the whole arm would be numb utilizes about 50 cc's of the same anesthetic solution. Again, it's half percent xylocaine without any preservative and a slow injection ensures that there's no pain in the vein since the pH balance of the xylocaine is a little bit acidic and can cause a little bit of a pain. However, using a slow injection technique, the nerves also get, excuse me, the blood vessels get numb themselves and they cannot feel the injection. Again, a slow intravenous infusion prevents that from happening. As you can see, the blood vessels are expanding. I'm checking to make sure that the tourniquet is tight so that the xylocaine stays in the hand itself. Um, I found that the slower you inject, the less pain the patient has, and this patient's been coming back to me for several years now and is happy with the technique as well as with the results that happen from her being pain-free from the injections. The injections need to be made with a very, very small needle, which we'll be seeing in a moment. I use many syringes since I want the needles to stay sharp to penetrate the skin as easily as possible. This is similar to the small needles I use for underarm axillary injections for hyperhidrosis or excessive sweating of the underarms. Utilizing needles changes frequently to prevent any pain in the underarms as well. Now as you can see, I finished with the slow injection of the xylocaine through the Heplock needle that's going through into her vein. Her hand now you can see is slightly blanched and that's due just from the xylocaine injecting into the skin causing some reaction to the skin. However, she can't feel anything as her hands are beginning to get numb. And while the xylocaine is working, I'm going over and going to draw up the Botox into my insulin needles. If I use a half cc 31 gauge insulin needles that are the finest 
insulin needles around. And the needles are 31 gauge, they're very, very fine. And I take the top off of the Botox vial so that I don't need to go through the rubber stopper. And what that does is essentially keep the needle tips very, very sharp so that they pierce the skin easily and again cause the smallest bruising as possible. So I take the top off of the xylocaine and I use two and a half cc's of normal saline injected into the Botox bottle. It'll essentially reconstitute the crystallized Botox into the proportions that I want and it'll be approximately two units per injection point is what I'll be injecting uh, this patient with. So I slowly inject the saline into the uh, Botox and swirl it around to to, to dissolve all the Botox that's sitting there. And again, put the insulin needle directly into the bottle, because it's completely sterile, of course, and draw up half a cc of the Botox solution into my insulin needles. And again, I use these frequent needle changes, both in the hands and the underarms, to make the ease of injections and cause less, less skin trauma as possible. Now what I'll be doing, you can notice, even though I've been doing this for over 13 years, I found that just marking the skin keeps me from essentially getting lost and knowing exactly where it is that I'm injecting into the hand. Since the 50 or so injections can go up and down the hand, and I want to make sure that I don't repeat any injections in the same spot. One area, of course, you like to avoid or inject as small amount as possible is in the thinar eminence, which is the muscle group at the base of the thumb, which causes the thumb to go over the palm. Even though you inject into the skin, into the dermis, what can sometimes happen is that the Botox moves into the muscle and can cause some thumb weakness, such as pushing a button through a buttonhole using your thumb. And this lasts approximately two to three weeks if it does in fact happen, more than the four to six months that the Botox lasts. As you can see, I'm injecting at a 45 degree angle with the needle point going up, so that with the bevel going up. So essentially, I'm going in, what will happen is when I let the tourniquet down, the skin itself and the pressure from the blood going back seals the wound and prevents any blood and Botox, more importantly, from leaking out of the skin. I go to the side of the injection points to make sure that I don't tattoo the skin. As you can see, there's hardly any blood coming back as I let down the tourniquet very slowly, even though it's been up only approximately five to six minutes, I let it down slowly anyway. And you can see the blood rushing back into the hand because I've used a horizontal injection technique. There's very little, if any, blood coming out of leaking from the sites, nor any Botox oozing its way out of the skin. So the Botox essentially stays in the skin and does exactly what it's supposed to. Some people fear that injecting like this and then pushing the blood back squeezes the Botox out. But of course, when done correctly, this does not happen. Her skin comes back to the normal color. I'll wipe off the marks and also have a slight puncture marks that will go away very shortly. I just put a bandage there just in case she has any oozing or any drop or two. Um, this technique has worked again for over 300 patients that I've injected. I'd be happy to discuss this with you in detail. You can please call my office at 925-975-3353 or on my website www.bridgesmedical.com and I'd be happy to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much and I hope this was educational.